Google has released a list of most searched words in Nigeria and around the world for the year 2022. We'll look at the list as we seek to understand what was on the minds of the people in Nigeria this year. And the World Bank has projected that debt servicing will go up over 123% of Nigeria's revenue in the year 2023. We look at what this means for the Nigerian economy. And we have a review of the headlines on the front pages of today's national dailies in Off the Press. And we're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV. We have cats a beautiful, beautiful uh, Tuesday morning. And we have fantastic conversations lined up for you. My name is Kofi Bartels. Um, our top trending segment, as usual, is what we start off with. And uh, <laughs> this is something that I'm sure will um, interest you. Um, a lot of people have been commenting on this, actually, on the social space. And that's what we do on the top trending segment, which is we take the conversations online and bring them on television. Um, this is what we call a viral video uh, showing a Nigerian man <laughs> confronting officials of the Vehicle Inspection Office, VIO. You know, if you have ever driven a car before in this country, you probably are, are tired of these guys <laughs> because they will always be somewhere looking for faults in your vehicle. You know, faults that you say, well, I mean, there, there are many cars moving around with that, you know, let me go. But hey, um, this is probably uh, a young man uh, you know, venting his frustration. He took it out. He took it out on the VA officials uh, and they were seen driving without their seat belts. All right. So uh, one day the bush meat go hunt the hunter is a song that is popular in Nigeria by the late Sound Sultan and uh, Two-Face Idibia. Let's go to that clip. Let's, let's just look at it. We'll come back <laughs> on the other side. Watch. But this is a VIS vehicle. Who is not using seatbelt? So I'm going down. <coughs> you can see this guy. Sorry, excuse me. Why are you driving without seatbelt? Why are you driving without seatbelt? You will arrest Nigerians for driving without seatbelt. But you yourself. You can see them. I just want you to know that it's sweet when you are breaking the law because you feel like you are above the law. Operation without seat belts. Where is the operation on this road? Where is the operation on this road? You are the one spoiling this country. Later you will say it's Buhari. You will say it's Buhari. Is it Buhari that is this problem? Ordinary small position that they gave you now, you have neglected the law of safety. Seat belt is not for, it's not because of safety of VIO we arrest you. It's for your personal safety. And it's an offense. I'm supposed to arrest you. I'm supposed to seize this car. Holding you bikini. Eh? <laughs> oh my god. I think I think all I have to do is just to give them a round of applause. Give him. Uh, a round of applause for that. I think we should just put a hand so together for this young man. Clap, 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 please. Clap, 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 clap. He deserves a, a round of applause. We need to look for the gentleman and give an award. You see, th that is what we want to see Nigerians do. That is what we want to see people in this country do. All right? Stand up. Stand up and stand for your rights. I mean, this is maybe one in 1,000 or one in 10,000 would have in this country will have the, the guts, you know, the boldness to do that. But it's your right. You can take a phone. You can film policemen. You can film military breaking the law. <laughs> you film military breaking the law. I, I didn't say anything. If you think, oh, you're going to give you a slap <laughs> that's going to last you one week before that slap gets to your head, your brain. Um, I know they, all right, I'm not there. I didn't, you don't know me. <laughs> but on a serious note, I think, I think, I mean, it's, it's important people realize they have a right. Uh, I've been a beneficiary of police brutality. Why? Because I saw them, you know, um, brutalizing 
uh, a young man, a young boy, somewhere in this country, and I decided to do my journalism, and I filmed them from a safe distance, you know, they were seen. Somehow they saw me, and I was beaten up, and, you know, uh, till today I might have the scars and the pains on my legs. But um, I got a lot of, you know, reactions. People said I was stupid, I was not wise, I was foolish for filming office SARS men. You know, but the thing is this, is someone has to, has to do something, you know. Someone has to do something. You never can tell what these VI officials are going to be. They're going to have an accident and die, God forbid. So this guy probably would have saved their lives. But this is a conversation we need to have. The keepers, those who are meant to be the keepers of the law in this country, are the breakers of the law. I'm talking from the very least to the highest. Now, I'm not saying that Nigerians should break the law. No. But I think that the least the Nigerians deserve from these guys uh, who are the keepers of the law. I'm not just talking about law enforcement officials, but also public officials generally, is that they should at least give Nigerians the respect of doing the right thing, holding themselves to the standards they're holding Nigerians to. I mean, if you go into the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you flip to the back, all right? You look at the shadows there. There is something called a code of conduct for public officers. It's very important. You know, it's very important. And a lot of things these guys do, I'm talking about those who are uniformed and those who are not uniformed in government, all right? It's against the law. So, and the code of conduct bureau itself does nothing to prosecute these people. So, I mean, we can talk about the, the, the policemen who drive against traffic. You call it one way. I mean, you go to cities across the country, I can give you, I know about Port Harcourt. They do it every day. You see uh, traffic congestion on one side of the road and they will switch to the other side and drive against traffic. Sometimes it's just one police van. Other times they're leading a convoy, a convoy of some VIP breaking the law. All right? I'd like to see one day that a Nigerian will pack his car on the road and block them, and other people will come and then film them. Yeah, they're going to beat the person up, I know, probably. They're going to kick him, probably. All right? They might even fire shots, probably. But until people stand up, rise up to some of the nonsense we see in the country, it will continue. You know, it will continue. And, I mean, yes, it may not be wise if you don't want to lose your life. Okay? But at what point does this rubbish sorry to use that strong word um, at what point does it end in the country at what point you know at what point because i mean we, we, we're going to leave this country we lived in this country all these years and one day god is going to call us our children are going to come and meet these same things and say oh the parents didn't fight to make nigeria a better place you know so are we going to be a country of cowards or a country that's, that, that, that stands up to those in, in positions of responsibility, I don't say power, responsibility, to say, do the right thing. Do the right thing. You know, people have hit their heads in the sun like ostriches for far too long. Okay? You can film a police officer if you think he's breaking the law. He has no right to stop you. But you see, we are afraid. That's why people will go to this guy and say, oh boy, Make you no try him again. No. I'm sure you have friends who will be discouraging him. You lucky say no be police. No try him again. No. You get family. Uh, we'll be your friends. We'll make you just tell you the truth. That's page in English. I'm speaking. Sorry. You know? We're your friends. You just want to tell the truth. Don't try it again. So when will things change? Now, VIO collects money from passengers, from motorists rather. Federal Safety Corps. That was a very, very clean agency. They collect money, bribes from motorists. Police, that one is a, is a normal thing. That one is a normal thing. It's a multi billion naira industry, what the policemen do on the roads. Um, and now, soldiers have joined in. I mean, military uniform, we used to respect it a lot. That respect is not there again. Because the soldiers have joined the police to stand on the road bring themselves down to that level of collecting money from motorists on the road. 
It's unfortunate. You know, so, so Nigerians need to do, I'm not saying you should go and stand somewhere and endanger yourself. No. Disclaimer. Don't do it. We're not telling you to. You have to now decide on your own. Right? If you feel your life will be endangered, you can decide to walk away. Don't, don't feel. But, you know, when will things change? I will leave it at that. And we'll give um, kudos to this gentleman who called these guys out. But we're waiting for the head of the VIO in the country or in Lagos State where I think this was filmed to say something. We're waiting for them to say something. Most times they won't say anything because they don't feel that they are answerable to Nigerians. And I think if they don't say anything, the media in Lagos State and Nigeria needs to take up the baton, all right? From where, the baton, from where this gentleman has left it, to go and meet the VIO head and say, what are you going to do about these, these officers who did not wear the seatbelt? What are you going to do about it? People say, oh, you want someone's father to lose their job. You want uh, uh, to take bread away from some from your family. Really? Do you know how many families have suffered because of victimization by these, these public servants or officers? So we're waiting. I think we'll give an ultimatum to the VIO head. I mean, I'm giving you 24 hours. <laughs> I'm giving you 24 If you don't say anything, I'll send a reporter to you so that you answer or tell us what you're going to do to these officers. It's really sad. Let's, let's move on. Let's move on. Sorry about this sensational aspect. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He has to answer. Um, another one. This is really sad. And uh, do not know what's going on in the southeast. Um, do not know if elections are hold in the southeast. Do not know. I mean, there's a little conspiracy theories flying around. The offices of INEC in different parts of the southeastern Nigeria have been attacked, you know, in the last 12 months. Lots of attacks. We hear unknown gunmen, you know, gunmen and all of that sit at home. No, it's been a bloodshed, bloodbath in the southeast over the past few days. Since um, a hoax or should I call it a phantom, sit at home was ordered, which has been uh, rejected by the indigenous people of Biafra and, of course, um, INEC. And uh, the headquarters of the Independent National Electoral Commission in Imo State, this time it's not in a local government area, but in Imo State, it's situate, or situated on Port Harcourt Road, Imo State, uh, came under attack yesterday as a gunman invaded the office. So what were they invading this office to do? You can see the pictures on your screen. Um, it was gathered you know, by uh, some news sources that the hoodlums uh, were more than 10 in number, and they attacked that office at about 3 a.m. Imo State has been a recipient of um, lots of attacks uh, by so-called unknown gunmen. Lots of attacks by so-called unknown gunmen. We hear that more than three offices in, on the premises were touched, were set on fire, before the police reinforcement could arrive. The scene to dislodge the hoodlums, who uh, three of whom were reportedly killed. Three of whom were reportedly killed. And um, look at those pictures on your screen. Uh, really sad one. They are really unfortunate. And of course, uh, again, these uh, unknown government have struck, and it's causing us to ask uh, what exactly is the motive of these attacks? All right, what exactly is the motive of these attacks? Why are they attacking INEC offices in the southeastern part uh, of the country? Well, the police public relations officer um, in, in Imo State spoke. You know, and uh, he had some things to say about that. But it's, 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 I think the most important thing was that uh, three of uh, the officers, uh, attackers rather, were killed, uh, while, while two others were said to have been captured alive. And the police are said to be on the trail of the other suspects. The police public relations officer in Imo State is uh, CSP Mike Abatam. CSP Mike Abatam, uh, I, I don't pity him. I think he has his work cut out because of the plethora uh, of attacks and, you know, killings in Imo State uh, in recent times. I don't, I don't envy him at all, rather. I don't, that's what I meant to say. I don't envy him at all. He has a lot on his table. Uh, but the question is, 
what are the, for me, uh, the, the reasons behind these attacks? You know, what's the motive um, when you attack an INEC office, be it the local government office of INEC or the state headquarters of INEC? What's the motive? Uh, you know, at 3 a.m., do they want to steal, you know, voter cards? Do they want to uh, burn permanent voter cards? Do they want to kidnap the wreck? Um, it seems, it seems that uh, such attacks would probably be to destroy permanent voter cards. You know, probably. I don't know. Another reason, another motive could be that there are some people who want to um, scare people away from going out to vote in the southeast. Maybe there are some people who would feel that um, <laughs> if people troop out to vote in the southeast, it's uh, not in their interest. They may want to do this. I'm just, I'm just trying to come up with the possible scenarios here. I'm not saying this is the situation. The police will have to investigate. Okay, they'll have to investigate, tell us what exactly happened. Uh, they killed three of these attackers, captured two, and now on the trail of the other. So they'll turn in number. Okay, that means five escaped. Um, so they should be able to get information. I mean, the police is used to doing what, call, what I call investigation by confessional statements. You know, most times they come up with results of investigations. It's through confessional statements. Uh, so we wait to get the reasons and why these guys attack. Is it because, you know, people want to scare some persons, want to scare, um, uh, what do you call it, voters away in Emo State? Is it because some persons want to intimidate INEC staff in River State and to make sure that voting does not hold in Emo State, sorry, in the Southeast? Is it that people want to destroy permanent voter cards so that people who have not yet collected them will not be able to vote, thereby reducing the number of persons who will be able to vote in Emo State? I don't know. This is what we hope the police can tell us. But it's a really sad one, and we'll be keeping an eye on, on that situation. All right, the final one. I'm sure a lot of you remember uh, that presidential candidate of the uh, People's Democratic Party, Al Haji uh, Atiko Abubakar Turaki Adamoa, um, he had deleted his tweet uh, earlier, you know, condemning the, the murder of Deborah, the young woman, Deborah Samuel, a student uh, who was lynched in her university, uh, that is the Sheo Shagari College of Education in Sakoda State for alleged blasphemy against uh, the Prophet Muhammad. Atika Walker had tweeted condemning the tweet, uh, the killing, and then he later deleted it. But you know what? People had already munched that tweet. You can see it there, and it was too late uh, when he deleted it. We already had copies. You know what he said? There cannot be a justification for such gruesome murder. Deborah Yakubu was murdered, and all those behind her death must be brought to justice. My condolences to her family and friends. And he since deleted the tweet. The suspicion uh, and the speculation out there is that he deleted it because he did not want to be uh, to incur the the wrath of um, uh, northern Muslims of Muslim fundamentalists who felt you know uh, you know killing Deborah was the right thing to do in defense of. Uh, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, you know, and of course, not a few people actually came out to justify why uh, this girl, um, Deborah Yakubu or Deborah Samuel, uh, should be lynched, should be murdered in cold blood and burnt. You know, they justified it because they said that the religion uh, forbids that blasphemy which is alleged of, uh, of committed them. We don't know where her. Uh, killers are. Some people were arrested. They were taken to court. You know, there were so many lawyers who came to defend them. Um, it, religion is really a, a touchy subject in Nigeria. Um, I mean, we hold religion in high esteem so much that, I mean, you know, if you say anything against a Christian, you know, pastor or Muslim prophet, you know, you don't know what you to expect. So, <laughs> uh, but the question is, with all our religion, where has it taken us to? You know, we are the same people who are corrupt. We are the same people who lie. We are the same people who who steal. We are the same people who do bad things. But we still, you know, call the name of God. Um, some also came out to say, well, if you look at the the writings, you know, of the Holy Quran, um, it may not support what happened. You know, so that debate is out there. 
Um, I'm not interested in getting into that debate. But what is the latest is, as you can see on your screen, is that the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, has stated that his, uh, he deleted his tweet condemning the murder of Deborah Samuel uh, because the tweet was shared uh, without his approval. Okay, it was shared without his approval. And this is something he had said before. It's not the first time he's saying this. But you know the campaign is on uh, for the presidential election coming next year. And these are questions that um, they'll be faced with from time to time. He was at a, a town hall, a presidential town hall meeting organized by a television station on Sunday. And he was asked uh, why he deleted his tweet. And he had to answer it. But I'll just uh, quote him here. He says, quote, it's a tick of worker. Quote, I asked the tweet to be deleted because I normally approve every tweet. And since I did not approve the tweet, I asked him to delete it. If you read my subsequent statement on that murder, I condemned it. Okay, uh, so that's that. Um, will Nigerians uh, take that statement uh, you know, as a true condemnation when the tweet was deleted or not? Um, will there be a, a backlash from voters who uh, were against the lynching and the murder of Deborah Yakubu for alleged uh, blasphemy? Will there be backlash in terms of votes against the Tiku for not condemning this? Um, only time will tell. But this is the country we live in, and uh, it always will lead people to ask the question, um, should, should Nigeria, you know, separate, um, you know, North go its way, South go its way, or should a country stay together because of the difference in values uh, of the two parts of the country? Thank you very much for your time. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we delve into um, off the press. We look at what the papers have for us. Stay with us.